Hi everybody, my name is Jason. My name is Caden. I'm Jaden. I'm Nicole. And we are the Yahoo and the Torah channel and we thank you for joining us on this first day. It is a it is a Sunday on the Gregorian calendar. It is a day of the sun, the Sol Victus day, the day that the Roman Catholics changed the day. What day was it, Kate? It was March 7th, 380-something. No, it was 321, wasn't Three, it? It was 320 between 320 March 7th, 321, when uh, Constantine changed the worshiping day of keeping the Sabbath, and they decided they were going to all uh, keep it with the, the Sol Victus, which is the day of the sun. So if you are out there serving our creator on the day of the sun, it's actually not his day, and you actually missed it. So everybody who's part of this channel knows that the um, the seventh day is the Shabbat of our creator, and things have to go in cycles of seven, and so these lunar calendars and all these other calendars and things that start weeks in the big, you know, when you have three days for a week and then you, you have another Shabbat, it takes things out of the cycle of seven. So we are in the first day um, of our creator's calendar, and we appreciate your time. We know that you guys could be doing a tremendous amount of stuff other than this, and this is very valuable to you. So first thing first, boys, um, without looking, I am going to give you a little pop quiz here. All right, um, who wants to begin the first 10 commandments? <laughs> Nobody's looking here. Okay, All what right. do you got? Bear fruit. Got it. Multiply. Yep. Replenish the earth. You got it. Subdue it. 100% so far, son. Have dominion over the animals. Whoa. You got it. Okay. Commandment six. The seed bearing fruit is food for you. The herb bearing fruit. That's good enough. I'll take that. It's six. It's six. Okay, seven is master sin. Oh, Oh, 12. Got it. I think it's 12. Oh. Okay, Jaden, start again. No, you can't look. Oh, I can't so, look? No, you can't look now. Oh, I thought uh, I'll, I'll look over. Okay. Bear yep. fruit. Got it. Multiply. Yep. Plant the earth. Got it. Oh, you just said it before. Um, <sighs> subdue it? You got it. Okay. Lucky. Okay. Um, <laughs> all, all herb bearing. Eh. Gotta have dominion. Over. Have dominion. All right, let's go through the first 10. Be fruitful. Multiply. Replenish the earth, subdue it, have dominion over all living creatures, the herb bearing in every tree is for food, man and woman should build their own families, oh, that's messed up. master sin, every cling moving thing that lives shall be food for you, don't eat the blood. I was trying to remember it by stories, how it went, I forgot in between there he tells them to join together one flesh, I knew... I knew I was close with the master sin. I was just yeah. Uh, well, it's it's close, and so these are important. We should know these. This is uh, we ha we know what the ten debrim are, and they are the ten commandments. And you know the the Christians will say, oh, yeah, we we uh, we keep those. Those are the, those are the ten commandments we the do moral keep. Moral law. The moral law. Well, is that true? Because the fourth commandment says to uh, keep the Shabbat, keep the Sabbath day, keep the Sabbath day, and for most of the time, that's not on the. You break that, it. There's a lot yeah. more morally you should do. You should do a lot more moral than just those ten. I feel like. Yeah, you should definitely um, not not drink the blood, not eat the fat. There's things of that nature, and so that was the last commandment. We don't actually, we didn't actually add that. We kind of slacked our work yesterday, but we have commandment number fifty-one, and commandment fifty-one is what. Do not eat the fat. Don't eat the fat. And it also reiterates that we are not to drink, drink blood. blood. Why? Because ah, life is in the blood. blood. There is something special that Yah created with blood, and he obviously doesn't want us drinking it. It does something special. Um, people will drink it, and they well, when you when you when you bleed out, you're dead, right? If you don't have blood, you know, the blood is what, you know, oxygen flows through your system, and without blood to your head, which is crazy, right? Without blood to your head, you can only go without oxygen to your brain for just a little bit. And that was the crazy thing about drinking coffee is it eliminated 52% of your blood flow in your brain. It basically rewired your entire head. And for those who um, still drink caffeine, we would strongly suggest that um, you you look into that. First of all, foremost, caffeine is a pesticide. Um, it is a in, in the plant of itself, and there's videos on this channel. You can research it. But if when it's in danger, when the, when the coffee plant is in danger, it releases the caffeine and kills all the bugs around it. Um, and it makes the bugs all go haywire and they, they just can no longer function. And so we are actually, not only are we eat, drinking the pesticide, but when they um, brew the stuff, when they actually um, roast the beans, they're putting chemicals in there as well. And um, that's why you end up with like a ton of oils and things of, like that in your coffee. It's, it's 
not a good thing when you, you're, you're getting oils in there. So um, I don't know what day I am, but I will tell you I am completely way better than I was. I have no headaches anymore. Um, I would have to say for the most part, minus today, I have a lot more energy. I uh, feel a lot better. And I'll tell you what, I'm sleeping like a rock. When I do sleep now, I was having prior to before giving up caffeine, I was having some really really restless nights and you know that's the thing when you did the research or when we did the research when I did the research on this um, it found out that it, even with one cup of coffee a day it converts that caffeine into this, this stuff called praxolithine and this praxolithine stays in your system all night long and you never ever your brain never ever shuts down and so as your brain never shuts down you never have rest and our entire body when we go to sleep we need rest our brain needs rest and, and even though we're dreaming and, and that's part is, is you know alive and well we need to be resting the other things and i you know for those um you know the grand she is still doing it um and i who else who was it that uh carla carla, carla you know we don't know I sister carla clarissa's doing it maybe clarissa and carla um whoever our, our dear beloved sisters are that are stopping caffeine as well the grand says she was a little cranky drinking her tea and Graham, it will go away. We, uh, we, <laughs> you just hang in there. Anybody who's stopping the caffeine, it will end. Yeah, I literally, I was the glutton for punishment. I was drinking nine cups a day at least prior to me just stopping cold turkey. And I had a solid seven to eight days of just massive headaches. Day two was the worst. And if I could stop this, I know you guys can stop that. So maybe that is a little bit of uh, encouragement for everybody out there who's trying to get their bodies in line um, the way that Yah wants us to have them. Okay, so let's get into it. It's updated. Okay, Nicole has updated this. I don't know if it refreshed on mine. We will see if it did. And there it is right there. So commandment number 51 is don't eat the fat. Um, it is a perpetual statute for your generations throughout all your dwellings that you eat neither fat nor blood. All right. Gentlemen, how you doing? Good. Good. You guys uh, survive your Shabbat? You guys yeah. get rest? Yes. Everybody feel better? Yes. Yeah. Got some naps in? Yes. A restful day? Any, anything anything occurring this morning? You guys have any issues? Uh, no, just tending to the cows. Tending to the cows? How do the cows look? Uh, better. Better? Better today, yeah. Yeah, so down here we have these, uh, I don't know if they have this everywhere, but we have things like called fly larvae. Um, that get into the cows and it creates giant bumps. Well, kind of like you have popping kind of like zits. I think they're called screw worms. Screw worms. Okay, so thanks, Nicole. Yeah, cows um, will bump into stuff and they'll like cut themselves open. Like whether it's like really small cuts and flies will just like lay an egg in there and there'll be like a worm that grows inside of their skin and you have to like pop it out. It's real gross. The it's kind first, of like a zit. Yeah, the first time we did it, the first time we saw people do it, it was really really disgusting. Once you once you are familiar with it, basically you just grab a hold of it. It's like a giant zit, like you say, and you squeeze it and it blows a worm out. Sometimes it blows blood and worms all over your face. Then which you, is And then you spray a spray on it which like heals it up. It's like a disinfectant and an anti uh pest uh what's it uh for the bugs. Anti parasite. It like yeah. basically stops the fly from coming back to them. Yeah. And so it is, you know, our creatures of our creator are amazing. They are very um resilient all of us and you know i back to my hand um for anybody that was um you know i got bit by a dog last week and i am mostly recovered my left hand got completely mangled and, and i think i had like at least 20 little bites in it and i did not know how this was going to recover i could almost make a fist right now so the healing properties of our creator our creator has not only designed the most amazing creatures out there but he's created us that we can heal up right it is amazing that we could take our arm and cut it and sit there and in a couple of days it starts healing up it scabs up and it just it repairs itself you know and when people think there's no creator or they're like oh i just I, i'm not going to go to the what do they say the magical guy in the sky you know i always point people to creation and the beauty of creation and the in in you know the genius of all of it i mean i could not create us the way we create um you know just just looking at at men and men have adam's apples and men have um, you know, just the incredible design of all of the way that men work and women work. And, you know, I was thinking about hair the other day, you know, hair is like our head on our hair, you know, um, it gets wet after showers, right? It's the only thing that really stays wet on us and it's dead skin, right? And so same with fingernails. It's, it's the, the fingernails are like dead. Whatever is growing there is dead. But if we rip our fingernail out or hurt it, you know, when we look at why we have, why do we have fingernails? I don't know. Maybe grab things. Um, Protected t- layers, t- scraping. I don't know. No, it's the absolute tools. It's the best tools you got. You can itching. You can itch. You can scratch. You can you can do all sorts of stuff. Without fingernails, we would have no tools. Imagine that. 
Now, Matt, what about fingerprints? Uh, this is for grip. For grip, right? We, we don't know why that we have fingerprints except for like some stuff, grip and feeling. I mean, you can, you can feel if something is smooth or if something is rough. Um, little itty bitty tiny details are the stuff that our creator has figured out, has designed. Imagine if we only could breathe in our nose and we couldn't breathe in our mouth, right? Our no we'd plug up our nose and we'd suffocate. Yeah, if we had right? colds and stuff in our nose, we'd die. <laughs> yeah, and I was talking to Cade the other day and I said, hey, try drinking and breathing at the same time. He said that's not possible. So every time that I've been drinking, um, I've been breathing. I mean, like, I take a big drink and I'm sucking down thing and I'm breathing at the exact I same time. Breathing, I don't want breathing in. I've never tried it. Try it. It works. I'm try I can I can breathe in and I can drink at the exact same time. Every time I've tried it, it's choking. never worked. That I know. And Nicole says, surprised I'm not choking. Uh, it works. You know, imagine that. And we only have we know that from our nose it runs up into our head somewhere and then somewhere else our mouth goes down. Two separate pipeways that do two separate things. Imagine down here, guys, if you didn't have nose hairs, right? What would happen? Bugs. Bugs. Yeah, we'd be sniffing bugs all day long, and we'd be like, if oh. Flying, flying up your nose, you'd be having issues. Yeah, and look at our ears. Our ears are like little antennas, right? They're like, they're, if you didn't have like the little round ears that you guys have, they're, they're um, antennas. If it was just flat and you only had a little tiny hole in the side of your head, you wouldn't hear anything. But because of the way your ears are, you're able to hear waves. You know, the, you're able to pick up stuff, and, you know... Imagine that. Try to design hearing. Guys, try to design something that could hear. How would you even begin? I don't know. Because there's like eardrums, there's parts of the ear. So now you got to be able to have people hear and understand it. And all it is is some way that I am talking to you right now. I'm articulating with this tongue that our creator has given to us. And you're picking up vibrations. And the vibrations are bringing it back to audio, right? You're able to understand what I have. That is amazing stuff. So... Anyway, there's always amazing stuff with our creator, um, and there's always reasons to praise him and to be happy. Now, we switched um, we switched out of the Sephir, and I don't know if Dr. Stephen Pigeon and the Sephir has gone to the dark side um, or what it is, but we had a version 22 of the Sephir app, and inside of John, it says that Yahuwah and Yahweh are the same people. It, it, it says, Yahushua says, uh, I am Yahweh. It says, you call me uh, Master and Yahuwah, and you are correct. And in every other translation, says, you call me Master and Lord, and you are correct. And you call me Master and Adonai. Teacher. Yeah, and it's it's not that. Yahushua is not Yah. It is the son. He's the son of Yah. And I don't know what... People really want the Creator to come down and, have, and our Creator to have died. Right? They're like, oh yeah, they killed it. Satan killed the Creator. What? What are you talking about? This is the most omnipotent, powerful being ever. You know, it's so powerful we can't even see his face correctly. Um, we'll probably die. And, um, you know, the, how would our how would a created creature kill the creator and him rise back? It didn't make any sense. It makes sense when the son is the one who died. All right, let's begin. And so this is a new version. I, I, I don't like it as well as the Sefer, but it, it's okay. So, um, Emissary of Elohim is the one that recommended this version, and um, I looked at it, and so we will go with this. What is this version called? What is this thing called? TS 2009? Yeah, it's The Scriptures. The 2000. Scriptures 2009, and we got it from somewhere off YouTube, from the... It's called the U-Vision. U-Vision. It's off the Bible app, the Bible app off of the, the uh, Google Play Store. So, for anybody, it's, it's free, too. This version is free. And um, Emissary of Elohim says, you know, you can go get the RSTNE or whatever it is um, version of it. But that's like 90 bucks. And that's like, that's for rich people. I, I wouldn't even know what I'd do with $90. That's crazy. So there's no way we're actually going to be able to pay $90 for a Bible app. And, you know, I, I find it incredible that, that, you know, I understand that people have to make money off this stuff. But there should always be a way. And, you know, I, I guess I'll go off on that on the United and Yaw stuff. I mean, these guys just cleared $150,000. And they closed the entire seminar down to the only the people that could pay for it. And, um, you know, in, in fact, the, the problem was they mixed religions. All their different speakers that they have, um, our brother Paul Nissan, he, he believes that Yahweh and Yahushua are the same people. And he, he venomously makes videos over and over and over and tells us how, how basically stupid we are if we do not believe that and how out of the spirit we are and all this crazy stuff. When the Bible clearly states without a shadow of a doubt that Yah is separate of Yahushua. Yahushua says it over and over and over. And we don't want a Messiah that goes against the principles of his dad. If we have a Messiah out there who is Yah and he says he's the son of Yah, 
then he's a liar. And then we, that's a huge problem in of itself. So um, we just got to keep what it is. Let the scriptures define themselves. Let's read it. Let's let the Ruach HaKadosh do his work. And let's begin Leviticus 5. Let's see if we can find any more commandments. All right. And when a being sins in that he has heard the voice of swearing and is a witness or has seen or has known, but does not reveal it, he shall bear his crookedness. All right, what do we what do we got there? Somebody swearing it up? I don't think it's swearing. I think it's more like taking a vow, taking okay. a witness. So is swearing breaking the commandment? Is is literally dropping bombs? Like cursing. Cursing. Um, is that breaking commandments? I would say that might be. A, you shouldn't a, a, have foul language like it talks about in the Testament. There shouldn't be foul language, but there's also a, what what leads to foul language? Anger. Heat of the moment. Anger. Anger. Exactly. Eli got it. Eli's joining us. Hey, Eli. Hi. How you doing, buddy? Good. You made it. That's good. Okay, yeah. So anger. So if you are if you are getting to the point of swearing, that means you are you have not controlled your anger, which is not good. It's not good for yourself. It's not good for your heart. It's, it's not what our Messiah did. And you know, um, brother Todd Bennett did a newsletter yesterday, and he says you know the Christians have made Messiah Yahushua almost like a girly man. Um, you know, they have him painted as this real frail guy with long hair, looks like a, almost looks like a girl at some level, but he's like, you know, this was one of the toughest dudes out there. This was the dude that was fighting up the, the Sadducees and the Pharisees, right? This was no girly man. This was a man's man. Um, he even told his, his, uh, disciples, you know, if you do not have a sword, go sell your cloak and buy him. And they're like, well, we have two. Is that enough? And besides like, yeah, that's, that's enough. But this dude was the guy that flipped tape. If you imagine a girly man going and flipping tables with a horse whip and these people would like rode on him, right? This dude was angry enough and tough enough that these people did not want to mess with this guy. And, um, you know, it is what it is. So anyway, so swearing, um, yeah, it's, 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 not, it's not against the Torah, but it's probably not something that we should be doing. And it, it obviously pollutes our mouth and pollutes our mind. And we're in areas where we shouldn't be, obviously. All right, so here, if so, so if somebody swears in this. And I guess swearing as is a witness. So this would be a command if we lived in the land, right? Um, but, well, I mean, is this a command? I guess that's a question. I mean, you, if you see someone that is a witness, that is a wicked witness, and you know the truth, or any matter whatsoever, and you hide the truth, I mean, you're going to get punished for it according so to God. So I think this is, I think this would actually be a commandment. So in the NIV, it says, if anyone sins when they do not speak up, when they hear a public charge to testify regarding something they have seen or learned about, they will be held responsible. This completely brings me back to the story of Gardner, Danny, and Manny. And we had um, some evil Christians down here that would... Um, they, they let this child be molested and they put a video out on YouTube. And we didn't know anything about this. We went and we saw this video on YouTube and these guys confessed to, to raping a child and um, on the YouTube video. And the, the child went down for murder and boss clan, we would not allow that to happen. We, we, we saw that video and I'm like, this kid was the victim, not the, not the guy that killed him. And so we actually went, we got ourselves in a tremendous amount of trouble. It cost us... I don't know, $20,000 at least um, in attorney's bills and various things. So we went and we went to try to save this child, at which point by the end, they flipped our house over and they they, ended, they flipped the entire script and they raided our house over this whole thing. So, um, but we did just that. So I think this is a command, guys. Anyone? Yeah, Anyone I with me? So I think that's like a don't let sin that's not seen don't go let unpunished. It, yeah, if somebody's sitting there and, and they hurt somebody else and you, you've seen it go down, you can't remain silent. That would be evil. All right, so yeah, that, that's a command. So I think that's 52. All right, let's go to the next one. All right, so or when a bean touches any unclean matter or the carcass of an unclean beast or the carcass of unclean livestock or the carcass or of unclean creeping creatures and it has been hidden from him, he is unclean and guilty. All right, what are we, what are we talking about here? What is a carcass to begin with? I think that's a dead body, right? Like a body. It's a dead, it's something dead, right? It's, so if, if somebody touches anything unclean, unclean beast, unclean livestock, I mean, basically, if you touch some dead stuff that is unclean, even not, I think even not. I mean, even a human body, they're... they're on your next one. Oh, is it on the next one? All right. So, um, he is unclean and guilty of it. So, would this be a command? It says he is unclean and guilty. So, you're still going to be unclean. And a lot of this is going to be um, ceremonial stuff, right? Like, if you had touched a carcass and then you tried to go in the temple, your bells would be gone. You'd be dead. You'd be laying in a pile. Um, so... 
anyone. I need a I need a quorum of thoughts here. Yeah, I think this is also a command. I think uh, we're, we're gonna get like over the commands. But what is the command? It just uh, says you're we're unclean. Uncle- you're unclean if you touch a dead body. I but don't. There, uh, well, I think we get into cleaning here soon. I think. All right, let's go to the next one. Let's not give up on two yet. Or when he touches uncleanness of man, any of his uncleanness by which he is unclean, and it has been hidden from him, when he shall know it, then he shall be guilty. Um, what does this say? If you touch a human uncleanness, anything that would make them unclean. Um, what are we talking about here, gents? Or when he touches uncleanness, I like the... Uh, uncleanness of man. What does that mean? Are you dead, body? dead bodies? If you like what about like... another person that's unclean? What if you touch them before nightfall? I think you'd probably be unclean as well. Yeah, I think you'll So see. if you had, I mean, what what are we what are we dealing with here? So a human uncleanness, if they touch human uncleanness, anything that would make them unclean, even though they're unaware of it, but they would learn of it and realize their guilt. Um, so basically uh, this one here is like if a man's unclean, if he touched an unclean body or whatever it was, a carcass, and he didn't know and then he finds out that he he's going to be he's going to have to do the guilt sacrifice. Right. So this would be this would be I mean, I think the very first one is a commandment. But I'm not sure what you would do here. But I don't. I don't know what you would you would actually do because we don't have those sacrifices. Let's go into four and see if we can figure this out. Or when a being swears, speaks rashly with his lips to do evil or to do good, whatever it is a man swears rashly with an oath, and it has been hidden from him. When he shall know it, then he shall be guilty of one of these. Okay. What well, this is this is this is a complex because he he swore to do that, but he doesn't know. Well. Um, speaking rashly with his lips. That's just some dude, I, like, he's going to go, I swear to God, or something of the sort. Um, and Father, forgive me, I know that's a pagan name, so I shouldn't say that. Um, okay, I'm, I'm just a little confused here myself. Uh, anyone? Nicole? I don't know, so it's just talking like they're guilty. What does that mean? Right, they're guilty. Well, they're at least unclean. I mean, if you guys, if you guys touch it, I mean, should these be in the commandments that if you... So if you touch filthy Eric, the, the Eric the swine guy... Um, or ate some of his filthy food, you would be uncling, right? right. You shook right. his hand, you would technically be uncling. Right. And that, that's funny too because I'll, I'll run into this. So this evil Eric guy that we talked about yesterday, he loves to take his pig fat and boil it up. He, he, he He's a cook and he puts his pig fat in all this food. Well, we were getting into the Torah and we, we used to buy his food, but then we found out he put pig fat in everything. And so we were so repulsed by this guy that one time we went to this little thing, this little cell thing that we had, and Cade, Filthy Eric went up and tried to shake his hand and Cade was freaked out and he wouldn't shake his hand because we knew he's on cling and we discuss this all the time that the guy is sitting there basking himself in pig oil. Like he would almost make it his job to mess with us over being unclean. Like he would yeah. literally come up and try and touch us on purpose or like he do did. something. Uh, I remember one time uh, his son who was an adult at the time, filthy like, Eric he'd like, like put like a hot dog next to us. He was just, he was just like, he yeah. was real, they were real filthy, real nasty. They, they, they loved it. They loved to provoke people and that, that's why he's evil Eric and he will always be evil Eric. It, it doesn't matter how good this guy gets, he'll always be evil Eric. <laughs> All right, um, so I, I don't I don't know on this. Um, so if we touch something, we become unclean. Let's let's run on to five, and it shall be when he is guilty of one of these that he shall confess that in which he has sinned. All right, so if we're unclean, you need to confess, and shall bring his guilt offering to Yahuwah for his sin. This is a new this is a new translation here, so it, it's spelled differently here. So a new offering to Yahuwah for his sin which he has sinned. A female from the flock, a lamb or a female goat as a sin offering, and the priest shall make atonement for him for his sin. Okay, so this this is this is something that we wouldn't have a female goat, right? We have Messiah Yahushua. So, so if um, we become unclean or if we touch filthy Eric, we the pig guy, we, repent using we need to blood. repent using the blood of Yahushua. There should be a thing where we clean here, like where we go bathe in the river. I don't know if it's in this chapter or maybe the next, but there should be something where you, if you're unclean, you go bathe in the river. Right. All right. All right. So this is this is going to be complex. We're going to probably have to debate this one when we're done. And he is unable to bring a lamb. And if he is unable to bring a lamb, then he shall bring to Yahuwah, he who has sinned, two turtle doves or two young pigeons, one for a sin offering and the other for an ascending offering. Okay. And again, we don't have those because we have Messiah Yeshua. And he shall bring them to the priest, who shall bring near that which is in for the, for the sin, offering first, and nib off its head from its neck, but not sever it. It says ring off ring. its head. Okay, ring. So what are we talking? What is this? The turtle dove. You got to oh, okay. ring its head off. 
I was going to say, well, if there's something like a goat, how are you wring the neck of that thing? Okay, so we have a bird, and you guys understand what that is, right? It's it's, it's kind of gruesome. And yeah. I mean, this is how we, I used to shoot geese when I was a youngster, and sometimes the geese wouldn't die, and they were really violent animals. You'd have to grab them by the neck. And you have to spin that whole thing around. And, uh, <laughs> they're it's, big, it's, aren't they? Uh -huh, they're huge. They're huge, and they're 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 huge birds. Remember, Papa had one hanging on the. Oh yeah. Yeah, they they were just they're huge. Okay, so anyway, we sever it's we don't sever the head. So there's something about that as well because there's other things that we're not supposed to, you know, that on the other sacrifices we're not supposed to cut them open the same mm -hmm. way. The offering is a little different. I think it's the way their intestines are built because there's a. Uh, the intestines were all the uh, excrement. We have experience. We had to kill birds for our dog to eat as well. So, Caden, what's the inside of a bird look like? The inside of a bird is just like, there's like stomach, but it's like a little lower. It's like higher than it normally is on a cow. If you saw a cow, And they have little higher. tiny hearts and little tiny... They're, they're absolutely they're, tiny. They're, everything in there is really Unless tiny. you get like a vulture or something. This is like, this is like a basic, your average little raven. Or it's not even, that's not even a raven. The birds we were shooting were like, blackbird. yeah, it's a little tiny bird. Like raven it's, would be much bigger. But we, we tried to avoid the vultures feeding the dogs because they, they were just very disgusting creatures. And we know we we're on cling. We call them the sky pigs. They're sky pigs. Yeah, they are the sky pigs. They're disgusting. All right. Um, nice. Nine. And he shall sprinkle some of the blood of the sin offering on the side of the slaughter place. And the rest of the blood shall be drained out at the base of the slaughter place. It is a sin offering. Mine says altar. Slaughter place is altar. Altar? Yeah. Slaughter place, okay. And he shall prepare the second as an ascending offering according to the right ruling. And the priest shall make atonement for him for his sin which he has sinned, and it shall be forgiven him. But if he is unable to bring two turtle doves or two young pigeons, then he who sinned shall bring for his offering one tenth of an ephah of fine flour as a sin offering. He puts no oil on it, nor does he put any frankincense on it, for it is a sin offering. Okay, so this is this is something for poor people, right? Right. So if you if you I mean I guess turtle doves I don't know how much a turtle dove would cost, but that maybe that's for rich people. A lot cheaper than a lamb or goat. Well, it, it, turtle dove's cheaper, but if you don't have a turtle dove, then the best you do yeah, is you, yeah, you, you, you flour. find flour. Here's a little trivia for you: is that uh, if you read in the book of Matthew and throughout the Gospels, you'll see that uh, Joseph and Mary. When after Yeshua was born, they brought tur two turtle doves to Kohen, showing that they weren't actually the rich people. They actually brought little doves, showing that they were actually poor. Yeah. So if you want to know where Yeshua came from, he was actually from a poor house. He did not have, like, the goats and stuff. He came from a very humble family. All hail those in poverty. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, let's roll. So did I do that one? Mm -mm. 11, right? 12. 12. All right. So somehow I've just done it. I don't know what I've done. All right. Hold on. All right, and he shall bring it to the priest, and the priest shall take his hand, filled with it as a remembrance portion, and burn it on the slaughter place according to the offerings made by fire to Yahuwah. It is a sin offering. And the priest shall make a tone. I've done it again. What is it? I don't know. It's a little copy. I think I did. I don't know what I did. But anyway, learning the ropes of the new app. I just like my suffering. 13. It's too bad they went to the dark side. And the priest shall make atonement for him. For his sin that he has sinned in any of these, and it shall be forgiven him, and it shall be the priest's like a grain offering. And Yahuwah spoke to Moshe, saying, When a being commits a trespass and has sinned by mistake against the set-apart matters of Yahuwah, then he shall bring to Yahuwah as his guilt offering a ram, a perfect one, from the flock, with your valuation as shekels of silver, according to the shekel of a set-apart place as a guilt offering. All right. What is a, is a Kadosh place, holy place? What? So this dude commits a trespass. Against a holy place. Does that say holy place? I say Kadosh, yeah. I don't see holy place. Set, right? set apart. When anyone is uh, unfaithful to the Lord by sinning unintentionally in regard to any... Am I on the right one? It doesn't even sound like the same version. In regard to any of the Lord's holy things, they are to bring... Okay, uh, penalty of wrong. So, um, see, this only says it commits a trespass. I mean, if a soul commit a trespass... And yours says what, Jade? Mern says here, if they committed trespass and has sinned and mistake against the holy things, the holy matters. Uh, okay, I don't even know what that, I don't know how you would. I don't even know what, the, what kind of holy matters. Okay, so set apart matters of Yahuwah. It says the same thing on this one. Um, well, I don't, I don't know what that'd be. Because, I mean, if you mess around in the temple, you're dead. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, there was like no reason. I think this is more like messing, they like met somehow like. Messing with the messing with the priest. Yeah, like somehow, like uh, like sitting against the kohen or something, like it's like the priest and. Or maybe they did touch something they were supposed to in the in the place. I don't know. I don't know. There's just. But you got to get a ram. A ram that would have been like expensive. Been yeah, that's people. like you really messed up. You yeah. really got to go get that. Yeah. All right. And he shall make good for the sin that he has done against that which is set apart, and shall add one fifth to it and give it to the priest. 
<laughs> probably the priest he messed with. And the priest shall make an atonement for him with the ram of the guilt offering, and it shall be forgiven him. Okay, there's a lot of blood. And when any being sins and has done what is not to be done against any of the commands of Yahuwah, though he knew it not, yet he shall be guilty and shall bear his crookedness. Wickedness. Crookedness, wickedness, yeah. Okay, so when any being sin has done what is not to be done against any of the commands of Yahuwah, yet he shall be guilty and shall bear his crookedness. All right, I'm just... That kind of feels like a command, but it's not really. She's like saying, you know, if, like you, if you sin, you will bear your wickedness. And so, we can't bring a ram to the priest right now. Right, but we need to... People need to know that when we when we encounter evil Eric's and they want to shake our hands and then we're unclean, that we need to repent. I mean, we do... I mean, those guy to guys, when they want to shake your hands, I mean, they could completely be packing around unclean spirits and evil and horrible evil things. Yeah, if, uh, demons and unclean spirits can pass through physical touch. There's like a lot of things they can pass through. They will cling on to one person to another. So you got to be careful who you are touching. Yeah. And I mean, they will run off in a pile of pigs off the side of a cliff or something. You know, I mean, I mean, there's they're... some powerful ones. Remember the guy ended up in a graveyard. That's right. But that's the same story as where you throw out the pigs. The dude was in a graveyard, like cutting himself. Yeah. And no, like no chains could bind him. He's, he's like, like, he's like a superhuman at that point, but he's like super messed up by the end of it. Yeah. Well, so yeah, he's never going to be the same, but I think Yahushua healed him. Okay. 18 is where we're at. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then he shall bring to the priest a ram, a perfect one from the flock, with your valuation as a guilt offering. And the priest shall make atonement for his mistake he committed unintentionally, though he did not know it, and it shall be forgiven him. It is a guilt offering. He was truly guilty before Yahuwah. Okay, so that's that. Um, the only question I have, I guess, is number, number one, I think, is a command. So oh, uh, let's read this again. When a being sins and that he has heard the voice of swearing... So this is like some guy that is like, he has basically admitted his guilt, admitted his evil, and you're a witness to it, and you've seen it. Um, you need to take care of business. Yeah, he will bear his wickedness. He says he shall bear his crookedness, but what would what would the command be? It's true. I think there's something about like, uh, I think we get, I think soon we'll get to something else about uh, not letting people, let not knowing sin out to the people. If someone sins, you don't say anything, you do that. There's a command for that, I think. Like, not to, like, hide matters. Right, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Everything should be brought before Yah. Everything should be brought before the congregation. There should be no such thing as deceit and hidden stuff. I mean, that in the darkness is where evil men make plots. All right, so let's, um, yeah, uh, in, Nicole, I need some input on this whole thing. I don't know. I was trying to read even further to see if there was more. She, she's a ways away, so I don't know if anyone will actually hear her. She's, she's trying to. Um, so oh. is the... So I don't I don't know if this would be a command, but I mean it's going if people are unclean, they need to repent. How do we how do we get people to understand that? I um, mean if we if you touch a dead carcass, we still need to repent. Right, you need to ask for forgiveness yeah, for being for, that. For, and then we're unclean until the evening. Right, bathe in the evening and then but once we bathe in the evening then we'll be cling. So um I don't know. This we'll probably have to debate this one up throughout the day here and try to figure this out. Because I do not know. Um, maybe Emissary of Elohim maybe can point us in a direction or any of you guys out there um, that listen to this stuff. Um, what do you think? I mean, we, we read it. Um, we need to, you know, it, we're, <laughs> we want to have commandments that we can all, that are able to keep. We can't keep the stuff with the temple related stuff. But um, everything that our Messiah Yahushua has replaced is things that we should have as commandments. So... Um, Nicole's giving me the, <clears throat> so, so this to me is like a guilt offering, just like our grain offering and our, what was the other one? Uh, grain offering and guilt offering and what was it? Wave off? Smoke, burnt offering. Burnt offering. Burnt offering. So this is the guilt offering. So this doesn't really apply to us today, but it does in a way. Well, what about verse one? That one, yes. It doesn't really say it's a command. It just says, if you see something and you don't do anything it said, about it, you will become what you will be. That, yeah, that person's sin. So it's not sin. really like you have to. This is something involved in the public, right? So right. it says they hear a public charge to testify regarding something they have seen or learned about. They will be held responsible. Um, so my says, if anyone sins and is he is sworn to testify and has knowledge of the matter, 
either by seeing or hearing it, but fails to report it, then he shall bear his iniquity and willfulness. This was extremely important back in the day because if you sin against Yah, Yah's going to curse you, and he might take out the entire tribe of Yah. curse your land. So it you might have, not rain or it's something. like if you like see someone sinning, you got to deal with it immediately, or else Yah's going to basically destroy Yah like he did over and over when people were going against him. So what what does this go today? I mean, we see this happen. Do we turn a blind eye and walk away? You should always no. do what is right. What is the right thing to do? If so you see someone that is like hurting someone and you like walk away and turn a bad eye and say not my problem i mean you're part of the problem for not doing anything or saying something about it so that leads me back what is the command if you see something say something <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like the government dude that government ran commercials on tv all the time I know. the snitch community <laughs> if you see something say something but this is i mean and, and it's all about retarded stuff this is a good stuff this is like Important um, stuff. It's like if you see your brother in sin, bring the matter to him. Let him know he is in sin. Yeah, I, I, this is. Uh, we're probably gonna have to debate this. I don't. I don't really know. Anyone have anything, Jade? You got any input on this? Um, Eli, you're it, real quiet. It doesn't. It doesn't give a direct command. It just says you'll be, you will ha be, have the sin of that person if you don't do anything about it. I believe there's something else here we will get about um, letting people know about other sins. Like don't uh, let matters go un untouched. Don't let them be hidden. That's so, what I think later on so in Leviticus so we will give you actually the commands. I bookmark this and save this for the next things. when we find the command and add this under the command. All right, so quorum of the family. Let's back to, back to one. Is this a command or is this not? And if it is a command, it, what does it say? And it can't be if you see something, say something, because that's not what <laughs> it, it sh maybe is. Maybe it is, but um, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> uh, maybe. I mean, it, who do you say it to, right? You, you take it to the the, uh, the corrupt police department across the world. They'll laugh at you, right? File a report. Okay. They'll do, do nothing for you. Okay, it's maybe it's just for like the whole, this is for the holy congregation of Yashorel. Yeah, um, if you, you want to You can't do anything in this world right now. You can't do anything. You see someone doing something, it's like you have to you have to wait. Like here in this country, you have to wait like six months before anything and file paperwork ever gets filed. And you're like, all right, now you got to wait like three years for anything to happen. And all your stuff's gone by the time that. Yeah, goes. no, we, we would be we would actually have $20,000 to our name had we not gone after this kid that had been afflicted and owned. And um, nothing good has become of this. And uh, He's it, still stuck it, in jail. Yeah, he's still, stu he's still stuck in jail for a crime he did not commit. And all the these groups of Christians they all fled out of this country a lot of them did but there's still a lot of evil ones out there and one um, died. yeah one of them died the main guy who was in this one of these days I'll post a video on this we have a, a, an interesting video and you can see why boss clan went after this child and you know the viciousness that we we took after you know all these people that had afflicted this this young boy so um, anyway I, I I don't have an answer we're gonna figure this out today guys um, so I guess do we say there's any commandments found today? Possibly commands found? Possibly commandments found. To be determined. To be determined. To be D. All right. Well, that's it. Um, I have nothing else. Um, gentlemen, do you guys have anything else? Uh, read your Bibles. We'll try and figure this out. Uh, and if you guys you... have any input or ideas, please let us know down below. Yeah, we're always looking for your guys' input on this whole stuff. And as, as we read this stuff, um, I, guess what the, I guess the bottom line is that we are determining what the will of our Creator is. And in the time that we do make the kingdom, if we make the kingdom... Um, these will absolutely be the rules and stuff like that. I don't believe we lose free will when the kingdom comes. So it is possible the people that make the kingdom could also turn to the dark side as well at some point, And we would have to correct them using these same kind of statutes and, and commandments. So I guess we'll leave it at that. Everybody, thank you very, very much. Our digital family out there, much love to everybody out there. Um, huge, huge hugs, uh, grizzly bear hugs from everybody. Uh, 40 paws up, and uh, I don't know how many teeth are there, but um, the dogs say hi to everybody as well. So much love. All right. All right. Shalom. Shalom, everyone. Bye.